Something that I never imagined Something I thought I would never see Something my eyes couldn't fathom Without knowing you Beautiful it was To see my Savior right before my eyes Special is how I felt When I heard is Yahweh keeping you from yourself? Subtitle. He keeps me from falling. Wow. Saints, it's time for us to have faith to understand that the Heavenly Father, He has absolute power. And the greatest power is to keep you from falling. Christ, he'll keep you from failure. Yes, he will turn what you thought was failure into a testimony. Amen. He'll turn that period into a comma yes. so you can continue. Yes. When he is the author and the finisher of your faith, your faith can't have a bad ending. Because he just doesn't write any bad stories. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He only writes good stories. <laughs> And the stories that he writes are the greatest stories ever told. Amen. Which is your life and his life. Amen. I was meditating before I came here. And I said, we all need to be more Christ-like. And allow people to share in our victory. Amen. Christ allowed you to share in his victory. Yes. Word says he became poor so that we could be made rich. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Though he knew no sin, and though he had no sin, he became saved so that we would be saved. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Each and every one of us, we should pray that Yahweh Elohim, Adonai Yahweh, gives me the tongue. With me, gives me the tongue of the Lord. Because we have to understand that every time we come into Christ's presence, he teaches us something. Every time we come into the anointing's presence, the anointing reveals something to us. And what has been revealed to us is what gives us the strength to face tomorrow. Amen? I need you with me. True favor is Yahweh keeping you from sin. True favor is knowing, hallelujah, that what he called you to do, you will fulfill because it's written, the good work that he began in you, he will see it through the completion. How is it that he sees his work through the completion when he knows you're just flesh and blood? It's because he is constantly reminded of what his son did for you, He's constantly reminded, hallelujah, what he called you to do, and he's constantly reminded that you can't do it without him. Amen. This being true, hallelujah, we understand, hallelujah, that as the Holy Spirit teaches us, once again the scripture says, how be it in that day, think not what you shall say, for the Holy Spirit shall give you what to say. It is also written, how be it when he comes, the spirit of truth, he shall lead and guide you into all truth. And we know who truth is because Christ said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Also, hallelujah, we've been taught, hallelujah, in John chapter 4, hallelujah, that the Father is the Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in the Son and in the Holy Spirit. Because they must worship Him in, and worship Him in truth. Amen? And once again, we know who truth is because Christ said, I am the way and the truth. Hallelujah. Once again, Christ also said that no man can come unto me unless first the Spirit draws him. And no man can go unto the Father but through so what has to take place, hallelujah, is that the Holy Spirit drawing brings you to Christ, and then Christ brings you to the Father. Amen. Wherefore it is written that my sheep know my voice, and the strange voice that I would hear to. Also it is written, hallelujah, to everyone who has an ear to hear what the Spirit says. Yeah. So you have to be able to hear what the Spirit is saying, and when you hear what the Spirit is saying, you have to obey. I need you with me, amen? But when the Spirit is revealing, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit is teaching, amen? What I have learned in my Christian walk is that I fall. What I have learned in my Christian walk is that I fell. What I've learned in my Christian walk is that sometimes I desire the wrong things. What I know in my Christian walk is sometimes I don't want to be saved, sometimes I don't want to be strong, and sometimes I don't want to be obedient. But it's at those times I live that I have to rely on His grace because He told me uh, that His strength is perfected in my weakness. What I've learned about me is that I'm sometimes. But what I know about Him is that He's steady. What I know about me in the name of God is that sometimes I'm wrong. What I know about him is that he is the wrong. What I want to do, hallelujah, don't take it the wrong way, more than confess a new house or confess a new call. 
I want to confess that he loves me so much, he's going to keep me from falling. I want to confess that he's going to keep me from falling. But yet, and even confessing that, I know the word says that a righteous man falls seven times, but he arrives again. So when I confess he's going to keep me from falling, that means he's going to keep getting me back up. It means every time I get down and I want to stay down, he's going to keep getting me back up. So what he is doing today, he is teaching us about his grace. He's teaching us about his unmerited faith. Yes. He's teaching us about grace because the power of grace is this. You don't deserve it. That's you right. can't deserve grace. Right. You can't earn grace. Yes. Grace is something no. bestowed yes. uh, yes. upon you when you are yes. justified to receive it. I'm not justified through my works. I'm justified through my faith. Yes. And he justifies my faith through his grace. Yes. Amen. How does he do this? First of all, let's recognize how we are saved. You're saved because you plea bargain. You're saved because you chose not to go to trial by jury. But you hooked up with the prosecutor. You hooked up with the prosecutor and you made a deal. And the prosecutor told you that if you will confess to this, I can get you off with the judge. So what we know, hallelujah, is that we're guilty. So when we come to court, hallelujah, Yahweh says, how do we plead? Amen? Guilty is charged. See, a lot of times we get in trouble because we refuse to hear as a talker. We refuse to hear as an disciple. Every day, hallelujah, I lay out the word that Christ has me for that day. And every day is a day of victory. I wake up and I'm confessing what I'm going to do that day. Amen. I'm confessing I'm going to have victory today. I'm going to have joy today. I'm going to have peace. No one's going to be able to keep, take my peace. Hallelujah. And now I'm confessing. Hallelujah. He keeps me from falling. Even when I want to do the wrong thing, hallelujah, he protects me and keeps me so I will not do the wrong thing. A lot of times when we deal with church, we don't want to be learned. And we're commanded to be learned because the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Uh, there's something wrong. Uh, uh. There's something wrong when you're starving or you're thirsty and dying of thirst, hallelujah, when he's giving you a belly of living water. That's a contradiction and it's an oxymoron. Amen. And Moshe was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. Listen, the Bible says, and Moshe was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. That's not read as a negative. It's read as a positive. So, I want, I, in other words, what I need you to understand is that Moshe went to the best schools. He went to the best schools of his time. And it wasn't a negative. In other words, there's some things that you will go through before you get saved that you're going to need to use after you're saved. The word doesn't say it's a negative. Uh, and when you, when you study uh, the, the culture of, of, of the Egyptians, they, they worship many different gods. Uh, they, they, they were astrologers. The word says that he was learned in all of their ways. But it's not seen as a negative. I need you with me for more. Y'all with me? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Come on. Amen. Yes. Here is that Moshe, he did all this study, he did all this reading. He went to the best universities. And the Heavenly Father chose him to write the first five books of the Bible. Moshe was raised to be a pilot by the greatest nation at that time. Yes. By an African nation. And it wasn't a negative, but a positive. So there's some things that you go through before you get saved that the Holy Spirit is going to use after you're saved. And you didn't even know it, hallelujah. It was all a part of his plan. All things work together for good to those who love God, way and all according to his birth. You were called to be a leader. And each and every one of you, you were called to bring change. But one of the greatest ways you can bring change, I believe the most optimum way you can bring change is to obey what the Holy Spirit is telling you. When you obey what the Holy Spirit is telling you, hallelujah, you receive, hallelujah, all the goodness that has been promised you, and those blessings are loose. Laws can put you in bondage. 
And some of you, you become a law to yourself. You constantly tell you what you can't do. You constantly tell you what you can't achieve. You constantly tell you what you can't overcome. And sometimes we even become religious in those laws. Where we start to make it as if the Heavenly Father said you can't do this. The Heavenly Father said you can't go there. The Heavenly Father said you can't accomplish that. But these are actually laws that you made up in order to slay yourself instead of having the freedom how that he keeps me falling. You have so many Christians, there are certain things they will not enter into because the whole reason is they don't want to fall into sin. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Saints, this is something that we are learning today. This is a little move how that has been given unto us how that we have to walk in. Now unto him who is able Amen. How it means that he's all powerful. Now unto him that is able to keep. Amen. The most powerful word here is keep. How is the Greek word for lasso? The lasso means to guard. It means to watch. It means to keep watch. It means to have an eye on. Amen. It means to guard a person or a thing. Hallelujah. This is very powerful for lasso. Amen. Hallelujah. It means to defend. It means to guard against. Not unto him that is able to keep you. Philosopher. Uh, he's able to guard you. He's able to keep his eye on you. He's able to keep watch over you. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Amen. Uh, if a fall is the Greek, falling is the Greek word. Apti. Apti. Optitas. It means not stumbling. It means standing firm. Listen, it means exempt from fall. Exempt from fall. Saints, we need to put our faith, hallelujah, that Yahweh is going to keep me from falling. What does that mean? That means I'm not going to fall backwards. If I fall, I'm falling forward. In football, it means I'm going to gain the yard. I'm not going to have a loss. I'm going to have a gain. Amen. Bible says, hallelujah, love covers a multitude of sins. Hallelujah. But where we need to go as a people and as a body hallelujah, is having security. Hallelujah. That Christ Yahshua is going to keep me in my mission. Amen. And I'm not going to fall. Amen. True favor is Yahweh keeping you from sin. He keeps me from falling. With Christ, he'll keep you from falling. Amen? He'll keep you from stalling. He'll keep you like, exempt from falling. Amen? It even goes further, it says, and to present, and this is beyond power, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. How is he going to present you faultless when you're full of sin? Unless he chooses not to remember your sin. How is he going to present you faultless unless he showed you some real faith? Like, no, 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 stay with me. Amen. Don't take this the wrong way. Amen. We know the Heavenly Father can't lie. And because he can't lie, it must mean that he is totally going to forget your bad. To the point, hallelujah, that it no longer exists. Amen. And what's going to work says, hallelujah, that he may present you faultless. Amen. That he may present you faultless. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what's so powerful about the word faultless? Hallelujah. It's the Greek word amos. A M O M O S. It means without blemish. It means morally faultless. It means unblameable. In other words, Hallelujah, Christ is going to bring you to a place, Hallelujah, that you will suffer no blame. What you can't do is what your faith can do. Where you can't go is where your faith can do. Yeah. What you can't accomplish is what your faith can accomplish. Because yeah. all things are possible to you. Oh. And this is the spirit of the learned. The spirit of the learned is this. I've learned how to lean on him. Yeah. I've learned how to lean on him for everything, especially my peace and my salvation yeah. and my sound mind. Yeah. Saints, we've got to come to a place where you're no longer relying on you to keep you from sin. Yes. But you're relying on him yes. to keep you from sin. Yes. I'm no longer looking to me, looking for my strength, looking for my power. No, I'm looking to him to keep me because now it's not my job. It's not my job to keep me. It's not my job to save me. Huh? It's just my job to believe I'm saved. Yes. It's just my job to believe all those good promises. Yep, he was talking about me. Yes. Amen. And the only way that you
you can receive that, all need to have a good conscience. Today's word is make him responsible for keeping you. Yes. Because when he saved you, he promised to bring you through. He didn't just save you for a second. Right. Save you for eternity. Let's yeah. stay.